Hello and welcome to another Rant Ray review. It is the final true crime get caught reading cr month review. So I am officially out of true crime swag to show you, but I do have adorable Sherlock Holmes mug with a little fingerprint and a magnifying glass and a blood stain and a little hat. So that's cute. Yay. Alrighty. That's crime related. It's just not true crime related. Alright, so hold on to your hats, folks. The final two books are, and these are both, the reason these are thematically linked, they're not really thematically linked like all the other reviews I did, they're both books that I am using for research because I am writing, well, I'm outlining a alternate history fantasy mystery. So I have to research crime and other things, supernatural things. Uh, and both of these books I've been using for research. The first one is The Casebook of Forensic Detection, How Science Solved 100 of the World's Most Baffling Crimes. And you can see I've been marking it. And the other book is <gasps> The Blue Sense, Psychic Detectives and Crime. Uh, okay, so these we're both discards from my library, my old library, and I was like, this is literally like, this is what I need to read for my book. Like, yes, this is exactly it. Yeah, like, who, you wrote a book for me, Arthur Lyons and Marcel Truzy PhD, thank you. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna read that one last. First, let's talk about the casebook of Forensic Detection. Yay, by Colin Evans. It's really good, especially if you are like a crime writer, because it's, it's, it's okay, so if you open it, it's by type of crime. So it's broken down into ballistics, cause of death, disputed documents, which is a really cool one, DNA typing, explosives and fire, fingerprinting, forensic anthropology, odontology, psychological profiling, identification of remains, Serology, which I haven't gotten to yet. I'm in the middle of reading this book. Uh, time of death, toxicology, trace evidence, and voice prints. And then, so first, each, chap each chapter or section is like type of crime. And then it breaks it down. It goes from oldest to newest. So it's literally like a little mini history lesson of each of those things. You're like, oh, like here's like you know, breakthrough important cases in ballistics. Here's breakthrough important cases in fingerprinting. Um, and it, it's, it's really cool. It's such a good, they're so short. Each little case is maybe like one to five pages long, but it is just full of good details. It basically gives you, I don't know if you can see, my cameras kind of fail. It's basically, it gives you the date of when it happened, the location, the significance of the case, what it did for forensics. Um, and then it just goes through, you know, here's the guy who did it, here's the detectives who were involved in the crime. And it's, and then the conclusion it talks about, you know, this person got life or this person got off or, you know, this is a weird thing that happened. And I don't know, it's just quite good, quite a nice, it really is like a case book or a little almost in like encyclopedia of forensic detection. It's fun if you're a true crime fan, and it's super useful if you are a crime writer. Yay, very nice, very good, especially me. I'm setting, setting my book in the 1960s, so that's, yeah. Um, no one ever writes about the 1960s, but I will, I will. And so it's nice to be able to read and be like, okay, I have to care about this stuff at this date and farther back, but anything after that, I don't care. Like DNA, not important. Don't need to care about it. I just read it for fun, but it, it's neat. I really like that it's it's uh, chronologically ordered. So very good book, highly recommended, easy peasy reading, and you can read it in little chunks, which is also nice. Okay, so this book, The Blue Sense, Psychic Detectives and Crime, I actually unironically recommend. <laughs> because it is fascinating. So these two guys, I was expecting it to be totally woo-woo. It's not, it's like straight up like, we're gonna seriously study like psychic detectives and is this a thing and what's the evidence and all this stuff. 
Let me see if I can... Oh, yeah. Look at all these friggin' notes. <laughs> okay. Um, but the titles are amazing. I have to read these to you guys. Blue Sense or Nonsense? Psychic Sleuths in History, Science Fact or Science Fiction? The Search for the Dead Sea, Psychic Spectrum? A Psy of Relief, P-S-I, What Psychic Sleuths Do? Um, Gerard Croisset, The Scrying Dutchman, Peter Herkos, The Clown Prince, Lies, Fraud, and Videotape, Lessons from Psy Pseudo Psychics, Psychic Success Stories, The Spook Circuit, Psychic Espionage, The Thin or The Blue Sense and the Thin Blue Line, The Blue Sense and Law, What Lies Ahead, Psychics, Criminal Investigation, and The Limits of Science. So, these guys take a really interesting take. Now, I wouldn't say skeptical, but I wouldn't say believing either. They're basically like, what's the evidence? And they don't talk about, like those two guys I mentioned, Hercule, oh, Peter Kirkos and Gerard Croissant, they talk about how like they're total phonies. And they talk about, you know, how often things don't like support psychicness, but then they talk about, well, okay, but there's certain things where you can't actually disclaim it because of this and that, and it's super balanced. And then they talk about, okay, what does it do for law enforcement? Because we know that people, there are people, fact, who claim to be psychic detectives. And there have been police departments who have hired or, you know, had help from psychic detectives. And what does that do for the case? And should it be used? And how should it be used whether or not it's real? For example, one of them was, um, there have been people who, they, they have a suspect. And they have a psychic detective who's like, oh, I think it's that suspect. And then they'll t they'll be in interviewing the suspect and tell them that the psychic detective, like, thinks it's you and has these readings on you. And the person confesses because they believe that the person is psychic. Whether or not the person actually is psychic, they believe it, so they confess. What? So, like, that's so crazy. And then, and then the other thing they're saying is maybe it's just a different point of view. Like, you know, maybe you're all searching for some missing person in this field and the psychic's like oh i see like water in a tree it's always friggin' water in a tree um but maybe it points them in a spot they just weren't looking in just because no one bothered to think of it um so it's really fascinating and then they talk about data and how you should think about data and how you should think about like skepticism and belief and i was like why is this book really well thought out like it doesn't make any sense that it's actually very thorough and careful and balanced. Like I was totally expecting it to be like nonsense. Like if you've read anything by, uh, what is her name? There's this lady who writes really woo woo books. Sandra Brown? I don't know. I got one for research. I have her book on my shelf, but it's totally woo woo, but this isn't. And I was like, whoa. So yeah, if you're interested in like weirdly balanced statistical type studies of psychic phenomenon and how you should think about it recommend it it's weird technically it's true crime i think so yeah um that is the end of get caught reading month all rantings and ravings and huzzahs mostly raves not really any rants we'll get back to ranting later uh but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you read some of these books they're all very good books and yeah i'll see you next time bye <laughs>